Start when you're ready. <laughs> um, in terms of the linebacker group, uh, Kirby's called it a linebacker by committee. Y'all you know, kind of gone by that all year. Um, how have how have you guys? So how have y'all kind of stepped up and maybe come together to have one of y'all maybe step up or be that guy? Um, I don't understand your question. Um, just like in terms of being a linebacker group by committee where there are a lot of guys contributing and there's that depth. Um, how do y'all kind of come together and step up to become that group where y'all are okay with being on the sideline at times or being in the game at times? Um, I mean, it's just something we embrace. We embrace it. Um, it, it creates a lot of competition for guys in practice. Um, and it's, it's always the hot man up, the, the guys who practice his best, the guys who, you know what I'm saying, go out there and, and play to the standard. Those are the guys that's, that's up at the moment. And we embrace it and it's never me, me, me. It's always about us. So it's something that we, we love, actually. I know we talked to you guys last week um, during the bye week and it was all about the work week. I mean, obviously you got a opponent this week. Is there any more you know, extra juice in practice, a little motivation, knowing not only do you have a big game this weekend, but it's Florida? I mean, I don't know. I wouldn't necessarily say it's Florida, but it's, the, it's a, a big game because yeah, it's the sure. next game. But I just feel like it's, it's a little bit more juice because our back's on the wall. We just came off a loss, and, and guys are ready to get after it. And I feel like that's the response that you want. That's the response you want from a team that, that's kind of went through what we went through. So I feel like it's a positive the way we've been approaching practice and last week and this week. And then if you take a look at Florida's offense, what type of challenges do you see in that when you uh, take a look at it? Um, this game is always very physical. Um, it's always the game that's won between the, the front seven to me. Like, whoever uh, actually Coach Smart showed us a statistic um, in the Monday meeting in the past, like, 10 years, whatever, whatever team had the most rushing yards, that was the team that ended up winning the game. So. Just, that, that just explains it all, man. Like, this game is going to come down to the front seven. And Nate Trez, you, you mentioned that y'all are kind of excited to get out there. You feel like your backs are against the wall. How much more eager are y'all to go out there and play a game, considering y'all had that kind of that bad taste in your mouth for the last two weeks? Oh, uh, man, it, it's, the, it, it's, the, it's the beauty of the sport. You, you, you win some, you lose some, but it's all about how you respond. It's never about where you start. It's always about how you finish. And, Right now, we're about to see how our team responds, see how our young guys respond, see how our leaders respond. See, it, it's, it's, all, it's all about the response. Nate Trez, you say you win some, you lose some. You guys can't afford to lose anymore, really, if they get the goals that you want. Exactly. How, how much uh, a sense of urgency is it that you guys kind of took your mulligan in terms of a loss against LSU and, and you know, no slippage now? Definitely creates a, a different mindset. A different mindset of you having to approach each day the way it's supposed to be approached. Um, but at the end of the day, man, if everybody does their job, we'll be where we want to be. Another uh, question about the linebacker group. I mean, without there being that that so-called standout like row form that everybody talks about, I mean, what, what, what type of goals do y'all have as the linebacker group in, the, in terms of what y'all have planned to do? Y'all? I mean, Same goals we always had. They don't change because of a guy or because of there, there isn't a guy. You know, the goals never change, the standard never change, no matter who's here. So. Did you bother watching any football on TV last weekend during the off week? Or did you just kind of chill out? Of course, I watched a lot of games. Did you? Okay, I watched you. You tried to. I do. It's weird though, man. Like, it's weird though, though. So that Friday and that Saturday, like, the change in schedules, not having nothing to do, like, I, I, I didn't know what to do. Like, it was weird. I don't like that change in my schedule. So you didn't sit there wishing, man, I wish it was us out there playing today. I mean, I that, did that, actually, like, just because it, just because it didn't feel right. Like it, I mean, I know we we probably needed rest, and it was great seeing family and everything like that. But it, it was just, you know, what I'm saying, weird being out of the routine. When was the last time prior to the LSU game that Georgia got all physical? Because I didn't think it happened in the national title game. I don't think that was the issue there. Would it have been the Auburn game last year? Or? Is there another occasion you can think of? I'll, I'll probably say it, it dates back to, to that Auburn game uh, at their place. That's probably the last time I can recall. What enabled you guys to bounce back from that? Where did you find it? What happened that week? And, and how similar is this? I mean, you're a team leader. I mean, is that something you draw from and say, hey, we've been here before? 
Definitely. Just like I said before, it's about how you respond. And the guys, the leaders, did a great job of coming out and <clears throat> excuse me, um, making sure practice was really intense, making sure guys knew the importance that every game, you know what I'm saying, it's, it's, the, last, it's the last possible time you, you'll be able to play college football again. For seniors and guys, like you never know what can happen tomorrow or you never know what can happen the day after that. So it's just a different, it's just like a switch flips, a switch flips when you get in that position. They, they use multiple uh, running backs just like you guys do. Can you kind of give me a little bit of a scouting report on, on their top three guys if you study film, what you know about them? Um, yes, I know they have uh, the top three, Scarlett P. Ryan and, and 27, not really sure what, what his name is, but uh, all of those guys, we know they're, they're averaging at least five yards a, a, a carry, five five or more yards a carry on, on, on certain runs, and we know those guys run physical, but it's the SEC, everybody runs physical. Everybody has good running backs. Everybody has multiple guys they can play, so we just have to tackle big and, and be physical. Like I said, the front seven is what it's going to come down to. How much, uh, it's, not, it's hard not to notice that 99 is playing a lot more right now. How different is Jordan Davis now than the player you saw back in early August, you know, and even going into September? Right, it just shows you the, the development of, of this program. Like, it, like I said, it doesn't matter where you start, it's all about where you finish. Um, Jordan was a guy that, that, that did a lot of scout periods for us and kind of came over a couple periods and he got better and better and better and going against that first team offense, man, it just kept improving him and he came back to our field. We was like, whoa, like what's, he runs every day after practice, he gets extra conditioning in, so he's working his tail off. He's working his butt off. I didn't look it up, but how many Florida Georgia games, Georgia Florida games have you played? Um, this will actually just be my second. second. This will just be my second. Okay. Um, what, did you miss not playing? I don't remember whether it was those are suspensions or injuries or whatever, but uh, you know, what's it like to, you know, this is like a short you know, any thoughts of playing this big game? Right. So, it, it, of course, it just means that much more. Just because it's my last time, every day Coach Shoe comes and, and tell me whether it's on the side or whether it's in front of somebody, or, you'll never play Florida again in your life. Make the most of it. How much of this is, and I don't know, maybe this is hokey, but is there a state pride element? You, got, you guys got 93 guys on your roster from the state of Georgia, and, and there are a lot of Florida guys. And back in the day, Georgia and Florida used to talk about high school football and who was better. Does, this, does it come down back to that element? Because this just seems like such a chippy, harsh rivalry between yeah. us. I mean, man, it dates back, man. It's probably like one of the oldest grown robberies now. Georgia, Florida, it dates back and it. it's a big game, it's an important game, and it's just kind of something that 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 we just we just learned learned to feel growing up when my coming in my freshman year with guys like this and guys and, and guys all, all those veterans, man, we don't like Florida. Period. That, that's, that's what you came in on, and, and that's how you approached it. Is it like that with high? I mean, Florida's kind of got a rep for maybe talking a little bit. Is it? Does that go all the way back to high school? Is it just? Are they just a different cut of high school players than the Georgia guys? Because the Georgia guys all say they don't really like to talk, and the Florida guys seem to really enjoy that. All right. Well, I mean, I don't know about the talking business, but I know them Georgia boys let them pads speak for them. But. It, it does dates back. It was always, um, I remember going to camps and things like that and being in competition with a couple of Florida guys, but I mean, it was nothing too serious. It's all the, the love and competition. Do you guys, uh, do you guys verbalize and embrace, uh, you know, this is nine versus seven and this is for the SEC East and the divisional implications or is that even discussed, you know, in the locker room or from the coaches? No, I don't think none of our guys really get into the hype get into the hype of the game or, or get into, you know what I'm saying, the outside. I feel like that's distractions, honestly. Um, we just focus on the task at hand, man. Try to come in, get as much tape as you can. Come in and know your, your opponent better than, than they know themselves. So that's what our goal is, and we try not to be distracted by outside sources. You guys, you guys faced Dan Mullins offense last year, Mississippi State, same concepts, especially short throws, RPOs and stuff. What's, what's the key? Personally, I feel like physicality. I feel like this is a team that's going to try to run the ball. How you doing, Mike B? I feel like this is a team that's going to try to, you know what I'm saying, overpower you, out, 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 outstrength you, and outman you. And there's just something that the defense can't can't go for, can't can't be up for. So I just feel like it's going to come from us. They don't go deep too much. 
does that put a little bit more on short passing game and clogging those lanes and making sure that you're not giving up those shorter passes that can turn into longer Definitely. passes? Definitely. Do you have uh, more questions? What can so you say about how that? Do you, how do you, sorry, how do you balance that? Like, because those RPOs and everything, they could, it, it turns from run to pass pretty quickly. Right. Um, I just feel like at the end of the day, guys got a assignment and it comes down to doing the assignment. DBs cover, linebackers tackle, defensive line keep lining off linebackers. It's just simply, it comes down to the game of football. It comes down to reading your keys and being where you're supposed to be at the end of the day.